First up, the missing children of Argentina's dirty war. They thought we'd never find them. And now, after 37 years, one woman's grandson is finally found. I'm used to my name Ignacio, and I will keep that name. But I'm comfortable with the truth, and I'm happy. This is the square. Correspondent Joel Richards reports on the grandmothers of Plaza de Mayo and their tireless mission to locate their stolen grandchildren. And then a Brazilian drummer who started his own school of rock. A social project that works with children, we provide services for free. Meet this week's game changer, Flavio Pimenta. And later, the biggest fish in the sea makes an appearance each year in Mexico's coastal waters. There was a fin right in front of my face and I thought it was going to whack me. Correspondent John Holman travels to Holbox Island to take a swim with a whale shark. Welcome to the show. Wars produce atrocities wherever they take place. Latin America is no exception. For some countries like Argentina, the impact of war crimes is still being felt today. Argentina's dirty war in the mid-1970s produced many terrible tragedies, among them the abduction of infants. Military officials snatched newborn babies from their mothers, in many cases just hours after they were born. Most of the mothers disappeared or were killed. A group called the Grandmothers of Plaza de Mayo began searching for the babies and decades later have found over 100 of the now adults. Correspondent Joel Richards tells us more about the story and about the group's leader in Buenos Aires. For years, she helped others recover their grandchildren but was unable to find her own until now. It's the call of the human rights movement in Argentina, a tribute to the memory of the disappeared. But here, while they remembered the past, they celebrated the present. In front of Estela de Carlotto, the media, by her side, her family, and behind her, the grandchildren that the organization she leads have found over the past decades. Hoy me dicen, as the head of the grandmothers of the Plaza de Mayo, Estela de Carlotto is the most visible, vocal and recognizable of the women who have dedicated their lives to finding Argentina's missing grandchildren. Now finally, she had found her grandson. Pero cuando, decía yo, cuando, por eso le rogaba a Dios no morirme antes de abrazarlo. Soon after the announcement, Guido, the grandson she had searched for, took his place in front of the cameras. The nation tuned in. He grew up with the name Ignacio, with a family in a small town in the Buenos Aires province. In his late 30s, he's a pianist, a music teacher, a supporter of the football club River Plate, and he knows his true identity. For Estela de Carlotto, finally meeting Guido was the culmination of 37 years' work. Her daughter Laura Carlotto was kidnapped in November 1977. She was 23 and three months pregnant. Laura paid the ultimate price for her political activism. Estela de Carlotto knew her daughter had been killed. She also knew that her grandson had been born and taken away. The effect of such a high-profile case was soon felt at the grandmother's office. In the media, they labelled it the Guido effect. 
Phone lines were saturated. The website had crashed with millions of hits. The news was still sinking in when I spoke to Estela Carlotto. Hay que ponerse en el lugar de una mujer que sufre el asesinato de una hija por razones políticas, eh, que empieza una lucha en soledad primero, con peligros, desconocimiento, miedos, pero me encuentro con otras personas, sobre todo mujeres que también estaban buscando igual que yo saber de esos seres queridos y me junto y estoy junta hasta ahora. Son 37 años ya que llevo en lo personal con mis compañeras en este trabajo de abuelas de Plaza de Mayo. For nearly four decades they have campaigned and searched for the missing grandchildren. Un golpe de estado, una dictadura militar atroz. 30.000 desaparecidos, muertos, presos políticos, niños que todavía no conseguimos recuperar. The 1976 coup brought in a reign of terror. The military persecuted opponents. Tens of thousands were kidnapped, tortured or disappeared. In the north of Buenos Aires, Memory Park. It's a place for reflection. There is a real sense of the dimension of the violence of military rule here. The names of the victims of state terrorism, people of all ages, men, women, children, and in many cases also women who were pregnant. Many women gave birth while they were illegally held in detention centres. Their babies were given to other families. The names changed for a new false identity. El motivo es de suponer criarlos a su manera, formar los enemigos y el poder de decir, mira, yo soy el dueño tuyo hasta de tus hijos. Ellos pensaban que nunca los íbamos a encontrar. Iban a dejar una sociedad con un hueco, un vacío de 500 bebés. Se olvidaron que existíamos las madres y las abuelas. With the country still under military rule, they began their search. And with DNA testing emerging, the grandmothers urged those in the field to help them. At the National Science Institute, I spoke to Victor Penchasade, who was instrumental in investigating how genetics could help the grandmothers. Looking at your, uh, your work over the past few decades, uh, I wonder whether you, you consider yourself more a scientist or a human rights activist? Uh, that's a tough question to answer. I'm a scientist, but with a, uh, a, a strong uh, uh, advocacy for human rights. I'm, I'm, I, I don't think I can dissociate one from the other. Pencha Sade has accompanied the grandmother since the early 1980s. They posed this uh, challenge uh, to me and another group of geneticists saying, well, you know, you have to find a solution. How can we identify um, uh, a child as being one of our children, as they used to say, or our grandchildren, um, uh, given that the parents have been assassinated and disappeared. They developed a method to prove to 99.9% .9 probability if two people separated by a missing generation were related or not. It was called the Grandparentage Index. Until then, there was only the Parentage Index. This index meant the grandmothers had the tools to confirm and identify who their grandchildren were, but first they had to find those children. The grandmothers had a, um, uh, they had like a, a central intelligence agency in their headquarters here in Buenos Aires. They would follow leads from anonymous tip-offs. They studied birth certificates, finding irregularities that pointed to a systematic policy to steal babies during the dictatorship, but they had to appeal for information. Nosotros todos los días decimos qué más. Entonces inventamos la visibilidad de nuestra tarea siempre en función de quién la puede ver, que es el que duda y es el que sabe algo. Culture played its part in the search. Plaza por la Identidad es una, una idea de Abuelas de Plaza de Mayo. Fue un intento de eh, tender un puente entre la lucha de abuelas y la sociedad a través del teatro. Theatre for Identity has run for 14 years. It travels the country with short plays and brings together hundreds of actors, directors and writers. 
Eh, en a propósito de la duda, había una frase que decía: si hay una sola persona que tiene la identidad falseada, está puesta en duda la identidad de todos. Porque no es que esos nietos le faltan a las abuelas, nos faltan a todos y no se puede completar una sociedad si no se sabe la verdad, si no hay memoria y si no hay justicia. Me llamo Romina. Soy mi nombre porque conozco la mi historia. With many Argentines living abroad, the grandmothers ran campaigns in different languages. And recently, before the World Cup in Brazil, they met the national football team. Hace 10 mundiales que te estamos buscando. Entonces, que alguno de los jugadores de la selección o la selección misma, ya con solo sacarse una foto junto a las abuelas, diga, nosotros estamos enterados de esto, también somos parte, las apoyamos del lugar que tenemos, es importante. I first met Manuel González in 2005. Back then, he had introduced himself as Claudio. He found out he was the son of disappeared parents many years before, but it took nearly 10 years for his identity to be restituted. Manuel is the 57th grandchild to have been found by the grandmothers. The judges asked me if I wanted to call myself Manuel, Claudio, Claudio Manuel. They permitted me to leave that name that I had used for almost 20 years, but the name had to change. And the truth is that En ese momento a mí salí a la puerta del juzgado, esperé un, ahí unos minutos, pensé y volví, le dije no, me quiero llamar solo Manuel. Y lo hice, creo que entendiendo el peso de, lo que, de la decisión que estaba tomando, pero sí sabía que lo que yo estaba haciendo era justamente como poder de alguna manera reparar esa, ese daño que nos habían hecho a, a todos. ¿no? Y bueno, yo tantos años después podía volver a ponerme ese nombre que ellos habían elegido y que era el que yo no tendría que haber perdido nunca. Manuel now works with the grandmothers at the Conadi, the agency that deals with inquiries and investigations into cases of the missing grandchildren. Nosotros lo que hicimos fue eso, fue como bueno, acá hay dos dos lugares importantes, ¿no? Esta historia de las abuelas y ustedes que hoy representan a todo un país en un juego. En ese juego el mundo entero está mirando este juego. Bueno, hablemos de esto, ¿no? Y Manuel told me how the search of the grandmothers has transformed as the country has also changed. In the 90s, this was another country. It didn't have anything to do with it. No se hablaba de la dictadura. A mí en la escuela nunca me habían hablado de la dictadura. Los spots de televisión de abuelas, las campañas de abuelas no salían a la televisión. O sea, era una cuestión casi adrede desde el Estado, tapada. Eh, existían los indultos, las leyes de audiencia y video punto final. No había justicia. Nosotros decíamos, lo que el Estado terrorista es, hizo, el Estado de Derecho lo va a recomponer. In the years they marched demanding answers, the white scarf worn by the mothers and grandmothers has become an icon of the human rights movement around the world. This is the square that lends its name to both the mothers and the grandmothers. It's the Plaza de Mayo. It's here where every Thursday since 1977 they have marched demanding answers from those in power about their children and their grandchildren. I went to speak to Martin Fresneda, the Argentina Human Rights Secretary, about the response of the state to the demands of the mothers and grandmothers. The issue is close to home for him. His mother was pregnant when she was kidnapped. His parents both disappeared. Esa lucha se convirtió en una lucha de todos. Las abuelas buscaron los nietos de todos. Y esa lucha, ese, ese legado que ellas dejan, hoy es un legado del pueblo argentino. Fresneda explained how previous governments and presidents had offered official pardons and amnesties to those guilty of crimes during the dictatorship, but that now there are institutions in place to help the search. Y son todas políticas de, de un Estado y que incluso vienen de antes del gobierno nuestro, pero que... Este, son políticas contundentes y que tienen eh, que ver con, con la vocación y la voluntad de, de un Estado en reparar, por sobre todas las cosas, los perjuicios que hizo el terrorismo de Estado en Argentina. The Kirchner government embraced the human rights movement. Nestor Kirchner overturned the official pardons to military officers in 2004. For the first time, he made an official state apology to the victims. The former Navy Mechanic School in Buenos Aires, where nearly 5,000 people were disappeared and where many of the missing grandchildren were born, was taken from the military and transformed into a place for memory and for culture. 
For some opponents, the Kirchners have used organisations such as the grandmothers for political gain. It's an idea that Estela de Carlotto rejects. Nos llaman oficialistas para querer ofendernos, pero nos ofenden porque y dicen que nos usaron. No, nosotros los usamos a ellos. Nosotros fuimos a pedirle, nosotros le, le vamos llevando las demandas y ellos responden bien. One of those demands was justice. While there were amnesties for the military in the 1980s, it was the grandmothers who brought the former military leader, Jorge Rafael Videla, to trial as the intellectual author of the crime of stealing babies. To this day, trials continue as lawyers representing the organization work for justice. Manuel had mentioned how in the 1990s, Argentina was a very different place. I asked him how he thought society saw the work of the grandmothers now. Yo creo que hay una hay claramente un reconocimiento eh, de la sociedad sobre el trabajo incansable que han hecho las abuelas. Obviamente siempre va a haber personas que no apoyen esto, más allá de los involucrados directos en lo que nosotros estamos tratando de resolver, que es dónde están esas, esos jóvenes que fueron robados durante la dictadura, los cómplices de que eso suceda, no nos van a decir dónde están, como no te dicen tampoco dónde están los desaparecidos. ¿no? Manuel continued to explain many of the issues surrounding the search for the missing grandchildren. I had many more questions for him, but we were interrupted. Mid-interview, he received the news. Another case had been confirmed. There would be a press conference shortly. The announcement was to be made just hours later. Manuel was needed elsewhere. As well as Manuel, they began to arrive at the grandmother's office. Those who have accompanied the search of the grandmothers for decades. Other grandchildren who, like Manuel, had recovered their true identity. And other grandmothers who had searched for their grandchildren. Absent was Alicia Zubaznava de la Cuadra, the woman known to everyone as Licha. She passed away in 2008. Licha was one of the founding members of the Grandmothers. She had spoken out in court at how the church had looked the other way when her family asked for help. She had searched for the girl whose parents had named her Ana Libertad and who was now announced by Estela de Carlotto as the 115th case the Grandmothers of the Plaza de Mayo has found. There are still nearly 400 families hoping to find their grandchildren. The grandmother's search continues.